Welcome to one of those lessons that is going to radically skyrocket your productivity and change your career. Because I'm going to show you how to hack your brain to sustain elite levels of focus every single day. This video is not about dopamine fasting, but dopamine hacking. How can you apply the latest behavioral science research to make you insanely productive? I do this protocol every single day. It works works every time and it never fails to help me perform at my highest level. We're going to show you how dopamine works, how does influence behavior and focus, and more importantly, what specific uh, protocol you can deploy to sustain increasing levels of focus. I hope you are ready because this is going to really change your day today. So take pen and paper and come with me in this journey. So first of all, what is dopamine? You've heard about dopamine a thousand times, right? It's literally a neurotransmitter. It helps in the um, moving information in the brain, just to be very schematic. And it is the goal-seeking neurochemical. So some people think it is the pleasure chemical. That's not exact. It is the goal-seeking chemical. In essence, the brain secretes this in anticipation of a behavior. The higher your dopamine levels, the better you are at sustaining specific habits. Low dopamine levels lead to lack of focus, behavioral inconsistency, and lack of discipline. So Having high reservoirs of dopamine is absolutely fundamental if you want to be an elite performer and perform at your peak. And this neurochemical is very important in focus because focus requires three specific neurochemicals, right? First, you need epinephrine. It's another neurotransmitter, right? And this is for alertness, right? So this makes you alert. Then we have acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, which is, is what triggers focus and attention. And finally, we have dopamine. Dopamine. And this is what sustains focus. This is what makes you focus. So dopamine is involved every time you're trying to focus on something. You want to try to have a 90 minute work session without getting distracted. You need to summon alertness, you need to summon focus, and you need to be able to sustain that focus for long enough to eventually finish and complete successfully that behavior. So dopamine plays a pivotal role in your ability to focus, but also to execute on any behavior. If we, on top of focus, we want to trigger a flow state, then we need to summon a different chemical. So we need to add, on top of that, an andamide. Which is a, another a neurochemical that gets secreted, that the brain emits, once specific conditions, flow triggers are created. But you don't need an andamine to focus, you need epinephrine, acetylcholine, and dopamine. Right? So this is why dopamine is important, because it allows you to sustain a behavior, to sustain a work session, because it's signaling the brain that it, it is, there is some sort of payoff at the end. And this is a very important word, payoff, because the problem with the brain is that it's naturally wired to look for rewards, right? But the problem is that most behaviors that are good for us take a long time to provide some sort of um, reward with the rate, right? So assuming that we're going to the gym every day. If you go to the gym one day, nine hours, nothing's gonna change, right? In order for you to get fit, you need to be able to wait a few months. In the beginning, it doesn't look like you're making too much uh, progress, which is why a lot of people have difficulty sustaining this behavior because they don't see immediate results. There's no 
deliberate reinforcement of the activity. So the brain secretes less dopamine. There's less goal-seeking neurotransmitter helping them become motivated and eventually go to the gym. And this is just how the brain works. The brain, in order to encode a habit, it employs a lot of neurotransmitters and a lot of um, brain regions but for the sake of the argument let's say that the brain requires that dopamine spike at the end in order to encode and rewire the brain for making that behavior easier over time and this happens across all human beings on all behaviors it's always the same principle and this is what we are going to be leveraging in order to sustain elite levels of focus and get the rewards and get the behaviors that we want which is in essence hacking the brain brain with something called deliberate Brit reinforcement what does that mean is that we artificially create a reward for the behavior that we want to ingrain in our brain if we go to the gym then we create a recipe for a smoothie or whatever something that we enjoy having right after the gym so we look forward to the smoothie and therefore we are more prone to going to the gym and every time you are sitting at your desk and you don't want to focus on something on a task that you dread you can deploy deliberate reinforcement strategy to gear your brain up for doing that behavior and eventually making it second nature to do there's uh bj fogg which is a stanford behavioral scientist calls it celebration it's celebrating the fact that you did a behavior that you wanted that you wanted to have accomplished but you didn't necessarily look forward to it right this is how she called it celebration right so how I specifically do it in order to get into focus is literally by having a performance bar that I really like, right? I really like this. I don't know if you can see it. It's just, in this case, it's lemon, but it can be chocolate. It doesn't matter. The point is that after every 90 minutes or two sessions of 90 minutes, I will have some deliberate reinforcement. Sometimes it's a meditation session. Sometimes it's a little bit of breath work. Most times it's just some sort of a snack that is performance based, that keeps my energy high, my glucose stable, and I look forward to. Before that, it used to be a coffee. I don't drink that much coffee anymore. But when I sit at my desk to write, for instance, which is a task I really dread, I have have the idea that after I'm done with writing, I will have one of these performance bar. And this is what allows me to secrete more dopamine. Because what happens in the brain, your dopamine secretion goes like this. The more anticipation you can create, the better your dopamine levels, right? Dopamine is always secreted while waiting to accomplish the behavior it is in the expectation of the payoff not when the not after the payoff some people think it, dopamine comes after you finish the behavior no it's before you have finished the behavior so if i know for a fact that i have a chocolate bar waiting for me let me tell you i am secreting a lot of dopamine that counteracts the natural cortisol that my brain secretes when i'm stressed under stress because writing to me is very stressful then this dopamine helps me move forward towards the payoff i have something to look forward to again it can be that or it can be a meditation session it can be anything that i really like to uh, to do or to eat and now and here's when the things get very interested because deliberate reinforcement we know that it works in order to trick our brain into secreting dopamine but what if that deliberate reinforcement is variable or intermittent in other words what if the reward of the behavior is not under our control maybe we get it maybe we don't well, it turns out that the brain secretes a lot more dopamine up to 
400% more than normal if the reward that we're getting is variable. This is the concept of the slot machine. This is why social media apps are so addictive because sometimes they reinforce the behavior with likes or or you know comments or whatever and sometimes they don't so your brain is seeking to have that reward and it's not clear on whether it will get it or not get it so if your the delivery enforcement is variable right your brain can secrete up to 400% more dopamine. And this comes from Sapolsky, which is, and Robert Sapolsky also comes from Stanford, I believe, behavioral scientist, right? This is in fact, one of the keys of why flow states are so prevalent in surf and ski because both surf and ski are very hard to control there's a lot of unpredictability sometimes you have a good wave sometimes you don't on on ski sometimes you have good snow or you don't you cannot control that the weather is uh uncontrollable by human by human by humankind therefore the fact that you may or may not have the best wave of your life available to you tomorrow literally tricks your brain to screen a lot of dopamine while you are looking forward to surfing which the higher your dopamine remember the more likely you are to perform the behavior the more the higher dopamine levels the more you can last which is why it is so important to understand how to implement vari variable intermittent schedules into your life. How I personally do it is that I buy, I don't normally buy this, and it's my fiance who does, and she does it through internet, right? Through Amazon. That's how she buys these things. So when there, when I, I may or may not have at home, when I finish a work session, today I have, but I think it's the last one, right? So I'm gonna ask her to buy new, uh, more of these, right? And I have no idea when they will come to the house. So I don't know if I'm gonna be 24 hours, 72 hours, four days, two days, maybe she'll buy them uh, on supermarket. I have no idea. I don't want to know when will I have those um, protein bars available which creates a variable reinforcement i don't know whether tomorrow i'll be i'll have it or not and this is what is going to allow me to secrete up to 400 percent more dopamine this is on the macro scale on the daily scale but what about the weekly scale well the weekly scale is i follow a very similar framework i never work on saturdays and i always go out on fridays i have a dinner with friends or whatever but i never organizing it i don't want to know where we're going i don't want to choose a restaurant i don't want to know i have no idea and i don't want to know how will i be spending my friday night why because i let my fiance organize that and my friends which means that it's always good and sometimes it's absolutely fantastic when we go to a great place or we do some sort of trip i have no idea but i don't want to know because if i know it's still going to be good but it's not going to be variable i want it to be variable because that is what helps me work like crazy during the week in anticipation of something that is going to happen on, during the weekend or on Fridays that I have no control over, right? So this is dopamine hacking. This is how you understand how your brain works, how to force it to secrete high levels of dopamine in order to help you achieve your goals much faster. Now, as I was saying, the more dopamine you have, the better. And let's talk how you can increase your dopamine levels because one of the biggest problems of current society is that we're wasting our dopamine on bullshit. There's so many distractions, so many apps, so many ways of wasting, um, of wasting dopamine. And in fact, that is one of the facts behind the current mental health crisis is that dopamine is too easy to get, or in other words, too easy to waste. So let's first nail the basics. So the basics obviously are sleep. Nail your sleep to have healthy brain regulation but also exercise exercise is huge in increasing your baseline dopamine also nutrition clean nutrition is absolutely fundamental in having the good cocktail of vitamins but also macro and micronutrients that create healthy 
hormone and balance. Now, on rest and recovery protocols that you can deploy, there's a few that are really helpful in increasing dopamine. One is meditation. The other one is yoga nidra, which is similar to meditation and, um, and breathing. And then on the supplement side, you have L-tyrosine, tyrosine. You can have these as supplementation that helps you have a higher dopamine level. And then on the med side, you have well, Adderall, of course, and then Modafinil. And this is how you should look at this, right? First, nail the basics. If you're taking some sort of supplements, nootropics, in order to help increase your baseline levels, but your sleep is out of whack, you're not exercising, you're, and you're eating like shit, your priorities are out of whack. First, nail these three, then master these two, meditation and yoga nidra, because they're gonna not, not only regulate your, your kind of your brain and your autonomic system and help you with stress regulation, but also they're gonna help you with increasing dopamine. Then you can look into supplementation in order to get that last mile. I personally do not supplement, I, I work under these two. And finally, if you need meds, and it's something your doctor will tell you, you have Adderall and Modafinil that are good for this. But in essence, take care of your dopamine. Do not waste it on mindless stuff and social media, porn, all that stuff, because that can only lead to a road of lack of discipline, lack of focus, and eventual mental health problems. And if you are healthy and obviously determined to perform at your peak, I would advise that you implement this protocol, that you hack your brain by forcing it to secrete dopamine through variable uh, reinforcement every single day. So you can have access to higher levels of focus and eventually flow states. And this is only one of the protocols that we teach our clients. If you want the full suite to really max yourself out and get to an acceptable in business, work with us. We'll be happy to run you through everything that we do to help you win. And of course, until next time.